Hello, this short podcast is about the regulation of hormone production and secretion. This production and secretion is actually regulated by the nervous system through two organs or through two parts of the nervous system. The first one is purely uh, um, a part of the brain known as the, the hypothalamus, the one that is situated at the floor of the brain, and attached to that hypothalamus is the a small pituitary gland that sits in this groove in the bones of the skull. The pituitary gland is connected to the hypothalamus by this stalk here known as the infundibulum. These two communicate together and uh, through their communication they control the activity of the entire endocrine system. So let's first look at the pituitary gland uh, which, it, which consists of actually two parts. So if we look at the gland here, the gland is situated here. So if we look at this, uh, this part and we look at the direction in which the gland sits in the head, this, this part here is facing forward, so that's the anterior, and this part here is facing backward, the back of the head, this is posterior. So therefore that would make the posterior pituitary gland and that would make the anterior pituitary gland. This division is not only anatomical, but it's also functional. So let's uh, look first at the posterior pituitary gland. This portion of the pituitary actually is nervous by nature. It means it consists of nervous tissue. It does not produce any hormones at all. Actually, the hormones that are released from the posterior pituitary gland are produced in the hypothalamus. And then from there, they are transported through axons and they are released directly from there into the bloodstream, into blood vessels. Two important hormones are produced from the in the hypothalamus and released from the posterior pituitary gland and these are the ADH, the antidiuretic hormone, and the second one is oxytocin. The antidiuretic hormone is involved in helping the body conserve water when there is when the level of water drops in the body or when we when we lose lots of water to the outside such as when we sweat when it's hot and the second hormone oxytocin is has several functions but one of its main functions is the uh, helping um, the the uterus deliver a baby and as well as uh, causing milk ejection during suckling. The anterior pituitary gland is endocrine by nature. It consists of endocrine tissue. So the cells there, and there are different types of cells in the anterior pituitary gland, they produce and secrete hormones directly into the blood. Now, the activity of the anterior pituitary gland is affected by signals coming from the hypothalamus. Those signals are actually chemical by nature. They are released into the bloodstream. They travel short distance through a, a portal blood system uh, that would deliver those signals known as releasing hormones into the anterior pituitary gland and under the effect of those releasing hormones from the hypothalamus the pitu anterior pituitary gland would release its own regulatory hormones. There are several hormones produced and secreted by the anterior pituitary gland. The most important ones are known as the tropin hormones. Tropin hormones. And there are five classes of these tropin hormones. The first one is the thyrotropin hormones or thyrotropes like TSH. TSH stands for thyroxin stimulating hormone. So this hormone or this regula regulating hormone acts on the thyroid gland and causes the thyroid gland to release its, horm its own hormone, thyroxin. You have the corticotropin hormone, the ACTH, the adrenocorticotropic hormone, which acts on the adrenal gland to release corticosteroids. You have the gonadotropin, like the LH and FSH, LH stands for luteinizing hormone and FSH, follicle stimulating hormone. These hormones, they act on the gonads, in the, uh, they act on the ovaries in the female to stimulate 
the maturation of the egg and the menstrual cycle and in the male gonads they uh, stimulate the production of testosterone and therefore the production and the maturation of sperm cells. The fourth group of tropin hormones produced by, by the anterior pituitary gland are the lactotropins or the lactotropes and the main one is prolactin and prolactin is responsible for preparing the mammary glands to produce milk and then the last one are the somatotropins or the somatotropes like the growth hormone which is a, a protein hormone responsible for the development of uh, the body uh, right after birth all the way to adulthood. So as we said the hypothalamus releases releasing hormones that act on the anterior pituitary gland and the response of the anterior pituitary gland depending on which releasing hormone is released will release tropic hormones and those tropic hormones act on endocrine glands and cause them to release their own hormones now this system this is this system is known as the uh, 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 chain of command it starts from the hypothalamus to the anterior pituitary through the releasing hormones to the endocrine glands through the tropic hormones this chain of command is is tightly regulated by negative feedback loops an increase for example in the level of the final hormone would cause an inhibition of the anterior pituitary gland to release tropic hormones would also cause an inhibition of the hypothalamus to release releasing hormones. The trophic hormones as well released by the anterior pituitary gland if their levels would increase in the blood in the body that would trigger a negative feedback effect on the hypothalamus to reduce the release of the releasing hormone. Let's give an example of one of the uh, regulatory mechanisms that affect the release of the hormone cortisol by the adrenal gland. The adrenal gland sits on top of the kidney so we have two adrenal glands one on top of each kidney. Uh, the activity of the adrenal gland is controlled by the chain of command from the hypothalamus first to the anterior pituitary gland uh, through releasing hormones and regulatory hormones. The hypothalamus releases corticotropin releasing hormone that acts on the anterior pituitary gland and cause the, this part of the pituitary gland to release adrenocorticotropic hormone when, and when we say release it, it means release into the blood the ACTH would travel in the blood and upon reaching the adrenal gland would bind to receptors there and would cause the adrenal gland cells to release the hormone cortisol and cortisol um, is um, a class of hormone known as glucocorticoids that act by causing a changes to the metabolism of sugars in the body. An increase in the cortisol level in the blood would act on the anterior pituitary gland through a negative feedback system to reduce the level of ACTH produced. An increase also in the level of ACTH would act on the hypothalamus through another negative feedback loop to decrease the amount of corticotropin-releasing hormone release.